meeting his influence is going to be on you his influence when we talk about being filled with the holy ghost okay pretty the bible says do not be drunk with wine wearing of excess but be what filled when you are drunk with wine you come under an influence that is the count of it the real <laughs> the real influence is the holy ghost it says don't be drunk don't come under that kind of influence no come under the influence of the Holy Ghost. You were designed to be under the influence of the Holy Ghost. You were designed to do things under His influence, to be guided by Him. You were not designed to do your own thing. You were designed to do His own thing. Oh, glory to God. That is our makeup. That is our design. That is what we are made to do. That is the highest expression of beauty where we just glide in His arms. <laughs> But the Bible says it's not in the man to direct his own path. It's not in the man to direct his own path. It's not in man to direct his own path. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It's not in us. We're not designed to direct ourselves. When we do that, we make a mess of our lives. Just yield to the Holy Ghost right now. There's the power of words. You yield with words. Oh, maka. Just yield to his influence. Say, Lord, I yield to your influence in this meeting. Lord, I yield to your influence in this meeting. Lord, I yield to your influence. I yield to your influence. I yield to your influence. I surrender to your influence. It doesn't matter if you are watching from home or anywhere. Just say the same thing. I yield to your influence. 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 Friendly mazinini, if retush ke paladinga zandi eshka. Again, dege 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 dege
I yield to your influence, Holy Spirit. I ask you to have your way in this place. These meetings are all about you. I'm just, I'm just a speaker. I'm just here to speak, but you are the one that's going to speak. I'm just standing here, but you are the one that is going to stand in. Oh, glory to God. Father, we just thank you. We give you glory, give you honor, give you praise. We adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone said, the greater one is in me. The greater one is in me. The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. So the greater one is in me. He's greater. He's greater. He's greater. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. You may be seated. Tatina Mash Kedeba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Mahi de Manosish. Okay. Welcome to YMC. <laughs> YMC, I'd like to say 2021, but YMC 2021 actually will still happen, amen? We are, will I use the word, okay, we are going to have two this year. <laughs> one at the beginning of the year, and one at the end of the year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want your heart to be set for these three days. Let your heart be set, amen? Let your heart be set. Let nothing distract you from these three days. Because I believe very strongly that the things that God would do, right, the things that God would do in this, in this meeting will be, you know, those things are going to carry you for the next five years, ten years. Amen? And even those of you that are here live, don't let anything distract you. Don't let anything distract you. You can be right here and miss out. And then somebody who is watching live is the one that will get what God has for them. You know, proximity does not always mean that you get the best. Amen? There's an attitude that helps you to get the best. Proximity is not the proof. You understand that you will get the best. You can be close you know, close by and you will not get the best. I remember um, in the Bible, the Bible clearly tells us, Bible, come on, someone should, this thing, reduce it, reduce it quickly. You know? Someone, uh, or there was a, you know, if you read the four Gospels, you're going to see, reduce the sound, reduce the sound. In the four Gospels, there was the story of um, um, a certain woman who, the Bible says that she had been bound, you know, for many years and suffered many things of many physicians. And so, that woman, the um, Bible says she heard about Jesus and she said to herself, if I may touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Now, the beautiful thing about that story is that, um, just minimize that, please. No distractions, all right? Now, the beautiful thing about that story is that um, the, the Bible records earlier that many people were, what's the word? Many people were thronging around Jesus. In fact, it was like a stampede. He was actually on his way to Jairus' daughter's house. And the Bible says many people were thronging crowds to the point that because after a while, the Bible says she touched him and she got, you know, she was healed and just felt power leave him. And he asked, he turned and asked his disciples, who touched me? And they are looking at him like, this man is mad. What do you mean, who touched me? 
you can obviously, you, I mean, you are the son of God, you should have two eyes, amen, and see that all over the place that there are crowds in this place. There are crowds in this place, all right? And you are asking us, who touched you? Which goes back to my point that proximity does not mean anything. It doesn't mean that you are the one that will get the best because people were touching him before the woman even came. Now she came, she touched him, right? And she was blessed. So it's actually what you do with your proximity. It's actually there's an attitude that receives. There's an attitude. You can be close. There are people close to Jesus all the, all the way. Everyone around touching him, touching him. Nothing. But this woman came there with a different kind of attitude. Hallelujah. She came there with a different kind of attitude. And it was that attitude that secured what she came for. It's that attitude that secured what she came for. Amen? It's that attitude. So, these meetings, right? Of course, maybe later we're going to discuss the kamikaze of <laughs> arranging these kinds of meetings. Amen? Um, apologies to everybody who was looking for or forward to a physical meeting. God knows that is what we have longed for, and that's what we long for, amen? Bible says, um, what's that scripture? It talks about the fact that every believer, right? The Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of ourselves, as is the manner of some. So we value physical meetings. We value what? Physical meetings. We value physical meetings. And so that is actually the perfect, like, perfect, uh, what's the word? What wow, words feeling me? That's the perfect scenario. But you see, in the uh, world today, you know, there's something called the new normal. It's a God forbid new normal. Amen? What that is, is a God forbid new normal. And so, that new normal dictates that, um, what they call it? It dictates that brethren, <laughs> before you meet, there's a lot of considerations. Amen? And sometimes those considerations are not even, they're not worth it. So, Anyway, trusting God that we're going to have more. I mean, this year is still a full year. We're trusting God that even with the new normal, we'll find a way to normalize physical meetings. Amen? Uh -huh. Because these kinds of meetings are best, um, they are best experienced, you know, with proximity, close proximity. However, even if you are far away, even if you are hundreds of miles away, thousands of miles, whichever, if you want to make millions, fine there's still a way to receive. There's still a way. Uh, back in those days, as a pastor of ours, I used to say there is no distance in the realm of the Spirit. There is no what? Distance in the realm of the Spirit. In other words, <laughs> in the physical, there's distance. Time, space, and matter. That's physical. But you see, those realities in the Spirit are very different. Time in the spirit is very there's a different concept. So it means that you can be here, amen. You know that times that Paul will say, I'm with you in spirit. When the man who was having his father's wife, right? The Bible says, Paul said, I, you know, when I'm with you in spirit, when I'm with you in the presence of the Lord, he spoke in terms of you know, say, I'm there with you, don't worry. When I'm with you in the spirit. In other words, in the spirit, there is oneness, amen? In the spirit, there is one, we're together. If I want to play along those lines, if you, if you, really, if you really dig into that thing, there are many things that you can, <laughs> there are many things you can key into. I mean, this you are to when you just understand that there's that oneness in spirit. It's just that oneness in spirit. I mean, what makes us one? We have the same spirit. Amen? Simple. What makes us one? We have the same spirit. The spirit in me is the spirit in you. Glory to God. The spirit in me is the spirit in you. And if you understand that, it just means, <laughs> it just means there's a world of possibility it means. So we may be far away, but we're together. We may be far away, together. If you want to stretch that thing by the supernatural, <laughs> who knows, you can even teleport into this place. You can also appear, you know. Amen. Those are realities of the spirit. You can so desire such things and to happen. Amen. It's true. You can so desire it. So desire, ah, no, I should be there. And then who knows? 
I won't teach you how to do it. Glory to God. Uh-huh. Just know that by desire, because the things of the spirit work with desire. They work with desire. They work with what? Desire. Uh-huh. So, any of those things can happen. Hallelujah. So, I'm just saying all this for you to know that you can, you will determine how you receive in these meetings. You will determine. So, I want to outline a few things um, starting out on how you can best how you can best um, make the most of these meetings. Make the most of these meetings. Now, the question would be, if I, the standard is just simple, if it was a fiscal meeting, what would be happening? If you can apply that to your environment, or wherever you are, or whatever you're doing, if you can apply that, the same effect. The same effect. So, first of all, if you were in a fiscal meeting, meaning that you were with us, right? Physically. What would happen? It would mean you'll be what? What are the few things? You would be focused, right? Uh-huh. Because you cannot be here, for example, and then you're washing plates. Can that happen? No. Exactly. <laughs> Can you just imagine you're here? Or wherever we are, and then you're washing plates at the same time. It's not possible. It's not possible. So, what do you do? It means that you should, wherever you are, leave plate washing or something and do whatever you can to create an environment amen a an environment that says retreat an environment that says retreat because you know with social media and this is part of why i personally hate social media for these kinds of things i hate them because of distractions because most times you are carried away there's this deception that you can receive you know um, what, okay, that there's a deception that what you've received before in a focused, you know, environment, you can receive well on the go, just, just being flippant. It doesn't work like that. The things of the spirit require concentration. Amen? The things of God require what? Concentration. They require focus. You must be focused. You must be there. Your mind must be there. You must be, you know, you must be set in what you are doing. You must be set. I mean, we've been in meetings. I mean, have you? There are meetings that I've been in, you know, and in many of those meetings, I, I, I remember the level of the level of focus that it took. The level of focus, you understand, that it took in those meetings where you sit down, you come early. Right? Even the, just, that, just that attitude, coming early, right? So, I mean, that's one thing, coming early, right? Uh-huh. So, it's not the one that you just breeze in. Uh, meeting starts by 8 o'clock, 9 a.m. You just breeze in by 11.45. Let me just check what they're doing. You just pick your phone and check, oh, okay, ah, oh, you say something nice. You now say, okay, and all like that. You get, uh, I mean, that won't work. That could work. It won't work. You should be anticipating. For example, we have we have the prayer session. We have the worship session. We have all those things. You shouldn't miss out on any of them. Because, see, all these things, what people don't understand is that all these things, um, they all come together, you know, and they all have their own purpose. That's why we still do these things after so many years. Prayer does a lot for you. The prayer session does so much for you. I mean, aside from the fact that prayer generates, you're generating power, it is making you more sensitive to the promptings of the Spirit. It is making you more open to the Spirit because there's what we call the flesh. The flesh profits nothing. And when you're in the flesh, the truth is that it's, you see spiritual things and, it, and, and you, lose, you lose value for spiritual things in the flesh. But you see, when you are in the Spirit, when you are focused, when you are under the influence of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost helps you to appreciate spiritual things. He helps you to what appreciate spiritual things. So you just find yourself that, I mean, there are things that, as the teaching is going on, there are things that just come alive to you. There's a sentence that I could have just said, and you're in the flesh. Mm, that same sentence just comes alive to you. That same thing, oh, wow, wow. You know? You come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. It opens up your heart to the ministration. It does. And that's why everything we do, we do, we do it in the play, we do it in prayer. Everything we do, every single thing we do in our Christian work, pray, it is saturated by prayer. We make sure it is saturated. 
whatever it is, even if you want to mop or sweep, the question is, have you prayed before you came to church to mop or sweep? Yeah. Because prayer is our engine. It's, it's where we generate, you know, the, would I say, impetus or unction. It's what, it's what drives us or carries us. Are you seeing that? It drives us, it carries us. So, when it comes to this meeting, it's very important, very important that, as I said first thing, you come early. That's a sign of honor. That's a sign of expectation. Those days we were so hungry in meetings, so not physically. Of course, we're fasting, Lord the God, but so hungry for the things of God. Okay, and that's another one, fast. <laughs> so another one is, are you fasting? We're well, fasting this period, so you should be fasting. Amen. These are things that, that, you know, how will I put it? There are things that say a lot about your state of hunger or desire. Fasting, you come early. You know, if you're share, many times, if you want to know if you are serious with the things of God, compare it with the things of the world. Just compare it. Simple. If they were sharing money or it was a job interview, what would your attitude be like to it? Compare that with what you do with church or or God's, God's things. Yeah. Here you come, lay down. There's always an excuse. But if there was a job interview, I mean, some people, if you check the job interview, it's just for 70,000 naira. You see them, sah, they're there. One hour before they sat down for 70K. It's true. Not to talk about the one that they say it's 500,000 a month. That's what, how much they pay you. That one, you come the day before and sit down and wait because no one can chance you. It's true. That's the value we place on natural events. We place so much value on natural events. That's where we behave towards natural things. And I say, oh Lord, we love you, your story. Love is value. You cannot love what you don't value. You can't love what you don't value. So that's why we see that many times the kind of you place so much value on natural things and your actions towards those things change. No wonder people don't receive much from, from God because there's no value. You just, you're just there because somehow you, you know, you've entered God's kingdom, so there's peer pressure in the kingdom. Let it not be like I'd not show up. Let it not be like no come. You know, they say we should come. Let's, you know, let's be obedient. But there's a different attitude. Bible talks about, you know, David talks about the word of God and how he found it that it was like great spoil. You know, that's the attitude. Like great spoil. Spoil is like is treasure, basically. You go to the enemy, you know, destroy the enemy, and then you take what's theirs. Like great spoil. There was a time that King David, um, there were some kings he defeated, and there's some that he, you know, they would go there and they saw, they saw so much gold or so many shields, you know, armor and things like that, and they would take those things. David got wealthy a lot by, by dispossessing other kings of their own, you know, of their own treasures. So he says it's like what? Great spoil. Great spoil. Like great spoil. Ah. That, that just tells you about the value. The value. So you can't receive from what you don't value. Amen? And value is expressed by actions. He said, oh no, you see my heart. A heart will always lead to actions. You always see the result of the heart in actions. Let's be here. You will always see what the result of the heart were in actions. If your heart is in something, it must reflect in your actions. You can't have it any other way. It must what? Reflect in your actions. Glory to God. It must reflect. We will see something about that. So if you say you value your meeting, you value these meetings. I value these meetings. Let me say this. There is no way you value these meetings. You will not get, or let me put it like this. The level of, or the way you are blessed by this meeting is directly proportional to the amount of value you place on it. Like that woman with the issue of blood, crowds thronged around Jesus, got nothing. I mean, he was on his way to Jairus' daughters to raise Jairus' daughter. Crowds touched him, nothing. But the woman's value, the same cloth they were all touching. She said, if I just touch the same thing, I'll be made whole. 
Now, let me say something. There's no point valuing something that doesn't have value in the first place. There's no point what valuing what does not have value in the first place. But you see, you can also devalue something in your heart that has value and not receive the benefits. You can see gold, right? You can see gold that has such value that we give it and think it's a stone. Or you may think it's you just kick it on the road. You devalued it. That gold could have changed your life. That gold could have been something you took to the market and exchange for a million dollars. If, you know, let's just say it had that kind of value. But you can see the same gold. Holy bananas. Yes, yes, yes. You can see the same gold and just kick it out. With, there's a generation that has risen that has no value for spiritual things. It's a generation that devalues things of God. That has no value for spiritual things. And because they have no value for spiritual things, they can never see the benefits or the results. These same spiritual things that have changed generations, have changed nations, can do nothing to change you. It's not God's fault. It's the value you placed on it. The word of God has the ability to change you, to do so much to you. But that same word can be sitting in your house as a Bible, of course. Can be sitting in your house, teaching this can be sitting your, on your iPhone, iPad, your Samsung. And they do nothing to change you. Why? Because you don't engage them, because there is no value. It takes value to get up. <laughs> it takes value to get up and pray. It takes value. So when it comes to these kind of meetings, even to, I mean, this, if this meeting was physical, the value to take your two legs, get up, and be at the meeting. Now let me say something. When you value something, you make sacrifices for it. You make sacrifices. In other words, it may cost you. The Bible talks about, you know, one of those parables about a man who went to the field and he found a treasure in the field. And what the Bible says, the Bible says that he quietly hid the treasure in the field, right? And then went away and sold all he had to buy the field. The field cost him something. But he was willing to pay the price because he understood that the value in that field was much, worth much more than all he had. Whenever you trade time or other things, events and all that for the things of God, you are trading something of way less value to grab something of intrinsic infinite value. The exchange is not the same. The exchange is not normal. It can never be the same. Jesus will say, if anyone, you know, talks about people who are left all to follow him, it's not the same thing that they will get back. Any investment you make in the kingdom has, is nothing compared to the rewards or the benefits you reap. That is why it's an investment. The idea of an investment is that you put something minuscule into it and you reap something much bigger. Right now, there are many people throwing money into Bitcoin. Why? The idea is how I can, you know, investments give me the ability to take this little thing I have and transform it or transform its value a thousand times over. The people who you see spiritually with massive value did not begin like that. They began as a seed. They understood the ancient mysteries of taking, you know, the things that were at their back and call available to them and investing those things into God and reaping massive benefits. There is nothing higher than spiritual pursuits. Many times what we have is that we have people who are taking the same time, the same whatever, and they are, they are exchanging those things for mundane things that will die in this world. So you have people who are just, you know, I mean, are natural things bad? No. But, you know, the problem is the value. The problem is the value. There are people that, I mean, for meetings like this, they will say, there are many stories they will tell. Let's say it was still a physical meeting. people that still will not show up. Even when they could have. Even when they could have. And the proof that they could have is that that thing you said, you because of it, you cannot show up for this one. What if you had an interview at the embassy? Yes. What if you had an interview at the embassy? What if 
you had the opportunity to meet somebody you know you cannot meet in this lifetime. What if? What if it was, you know, that same job that you say I cannot leave for the thing of God, I cannot come out for one or two days or three days, that same job, they now tell you, ah, there is another job that will pay you much more. That will what? Pay you much more. Or another, um, how do I put it? Another opportunity or something like that. What if they told you your mom was very sick? What if they told you? You find out that that same thing you say you cannot leave because of a boss or even, let me use the word parents or whatever, you find out that that thing is very livable. So you find out that in fact you could have. Because of course when you find out that there's something of more, because this is the point. Nobody is a crazy person that sees something of way more value over there that still holds on to something of you know, little value over here. It's because you can't see. It's because you can't see. It's because you can't see. If you could see, that's why many times you see a person, they call you, they give you excuses. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> It's because they can't see. It's a it's a vision problem. It's a seeing problem. So sometimes, I, you know, and as a, as a pastor, as a minister, we judge these things by those things. So don't feel one kind of when your 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 excuse is not palatable to a minister or to your pastor because he just looks and says, oh, "This one is not serious." Because the truth is that we know that. Look, <laughs> we know that. Yeah. People gravitate towards what they value. Many times it doesn't look like a big deal. That thing you think you're going for at the expense of spiritual things. It doesn't seem to be a big thing. It doesn't look big. You understand? It doesn't look big. It looks like, you know, hallelujah. Please, can we do something about that? Huh? Let's do something about that. I don't think it's possible, please. All right? Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> uh -huh. So it takes it takes vision. If you can't see it, forget you always gravitate towards value. To always so write that down. I you always gravitate towards value. So if something has no value to you, you will not go towards it. Even if the thing has value. The man sold all. So it's always, there's always an exchange going on every day. And funny enough, because let me even say this, funny enough, many people, this is the essay that goes on. Exchanging vain things. I always say vain things. I think talking about things that have no eternal value. Vain things for vain things. Lesser vain things for greater vain things. And zero towards eternal things. 